In this video, you will not only learn what no opener, no refer, and no follow mean, but also what impact they have on your links and your website, including SEO. But first, I want to make sure that we get our terminology right. This right here is some HTML, and HTML is made up of a series of elements. An element is composed of a tag and sometimes content. The tag starts here, ends here, and has its content in the middle. HTML tags have attributes, and in this case, both href and rel are attributes of the a tag. These right here are the values of the rel tag, which in this case are no opener and no refer. Okay, so with that out of the way, what do these rel values actually do? Let's start with no opener. In the most simple sense, no opener ensures that a new page does not have access to the page that came before it. If you were to explicitly provide the opener rel value in your link, the new page will be able to change the location of the page, which is a big vulnerability. An attacker could change the content of this tab to an advertisement, inappropriate content, or even create a fake login screen, which could be used to steal the password of an unsuspecting visitor. Most modern browsers now default to the no opener behavior, but every good web developer will explicitly include no opener in all external links. All right, let's talk about no refer next. By adding no refer to your external links, the new page will not have any idea where the visitor came from. Normally, a page can look at the document.refer value for this information, but in the case of no refer, this value will be null or empty. By default, most modern browsers will have a refer policy called strict origin when cross origin. What this means is that for a regular link, the browser will share the entire URL, including the domain name, path, and any parameters with a linked page of the same domain name, just the domain name with a linked page of a different domain name, and nothing at all if the destination is less secure. There are a total of eight different refer policy values, and I have an entire video where I demonstrate what each one of these do. Next up, we have no follow. No follow simply tells search engines and bots to ignore this link on their crawl journey. From the perspective of a crawler, it essentially turns a link into a non-link. Now, of course, this is only a hint, so the crawler can choose to continue on if it so desires. So why would you want to flag a link as nofollow in the first place? According to the official HTML standard, the nofollow keyword indicates that the link is not endorsed by the original author or publisher of the page, or that the link was included because of a commercial relationship between people affiliated with the two pages. Google actually took this a step further in 2019 and announced two new rel values, which are sponsored and UGC. Sponsored links include paid links, affiliate links, advertisements, and pretty much puts the second half of the HTML standard in its own value. UGC links are specifically for user-generated content like links in posts, comments, and reviews. That means that if an external link does not fit into one of those two categories and you do not want to publicly endorse the website, then you should use nofollow. But my argument, at least for my websites, is that I rarely see the need to even link to a website in the first place if I do not endorse it. And I personally, for that reason, do not use nofollow on its own very much. Now, because sponsored and UGC are not part of the HTML standard yet, it is recommended to pair these up with nofollow to ensure backward and browser compatibility. Nofollow is the only rel value that we talked about today to have an impact on SEO. So if you wanna explore that a little bit more, I recommend that you check out this video next.